Hi everyone, I'm Tim the Suburban Dad. Helping dads find great bourbon. It's a new year, a new set of bourbon awaits us. I'm gonna go over what I will be hunting for, what I might be finding, and what I definitely will not be pursuing. Let's get to it. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching today. As always, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You do not want to miss out on all the information that I have to share with you. So in 2023, I'm going to go through a, a few a few releases that are on the horizon, as well as some things that I learned from 2022 and will carry forward into this year. So first, let's start with Booker's. Y'all, by, by now, if you have been watching my show at all, you should know that I'm a big fan of Booker's. Okay, past several years I've gotten every single batch and I still intend to do that despite rising cost, despite increasing rarity. It's been tough to find them these, this year, especially Kentucky Tea and Pinky's Batch. So, man, just barely, just barely got all of them. So in 2023, if, if the price goes above $100 for retail, forget it. That's it. That's, that's my breaking point. Right now, I'm still able to find it for about mm, 90 bucks ish. So I'm still I'm still able to stomach it for that much. But man, Booker's has a sexy bottle. It's got cool stories and cool names, and the juice is really good. Some of them are great, but man, it's hard to justify buying four batches a year at more than a hundred dollars. So. I'm trying to stick with you, Bookers. I really am. I'd really be surprised, though, if they went above the $100 price point anytime soon because I feel like that would be a breaking point for a lot of people. A lot of people have already fallen off the bandwagon, which is odd given how hard it is to find nowadays, but I think that would really break it for a lot of people. Uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This is one that I've been sleeping on. It's lacking, really. I got a store pick this last year that was a barrel proof Elijah Craig and it was fantastic. So I really intend to make it an effort to get those releases. Uh, there's, there's only three, uh, the A123, B523, and then the C923. Those stand for the months and the years. 159 are January, May, September. ABC. I don't know why they felt the need to put that in there too, but whatever. But these are only 65 to 70 bucks retail. There are store picks that you can get. They're a lot more easy to find than Booker's. And they're in the same proof range as well, if not higher sometimes. Definitely something I want to target this year. Maker's Mark, their wood finishing series. I was under the impression that the BRT series was the last one. But there's rumors of a BEP release coming this year. Now, the only evidence I've found for this is on shady websites. And no, not the kind that you go on late at night. Websites that are trying to sell you bottles, but they, they all had the same description on there talking about this maker's release. So far, I can only see like one release as opposed to an 0102 and BEP stands for barrel entry proof. Uh, the description's pretty dumb. It offers more of the things that you find at a lower barrel entry proof. 110 proof is what Maker's Mark puts their bourbon in. But that, that why wouldn't we already be having that in any of their other batches? So that description sounds really dumb to me. And if it results in a bunch of oakiness, that's gonna be an off-putter to me too. That's not what I'm about. We'll see if it happens. We'll see if there's one or just, or just one or more batches and when it comes out. So stay tuned. As soon as I know something, I'll let you guys know. A bottle that's supposed to come out in March is a new one from the Penelope line, Penelope Rio. I've, I talked about Penelope Valencia. Unfortunately, I was not able to find it actually. Who knows, maybe there's still some floating around out there I'll get a chance to try. Penelope Rio is aged in honey and amberana barrels. 
Now, I've not tried a honey finished barrel yet. I've tried Amberana and it gave a very strong cinnamon uh, tone to it. And so I can only imagine honey and Amberana finish would probably be something like a cinnamon graham cracker, something like that. I mean, that sounds pretty darn good. Uh, no idea on the price. I'm assuming it's around 65-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood, based on the Valencia. Probably a similar distribution and rarity. So be on the lookout for that. March is when that's supposed to drop. I still love Balconies, the whole brand Balconies. I didn't get to try much of their their new stuff last year. I feel like they didn't have as much in 2022 as they did in 2020 or 2021. But I'm always on the lookout for a new bottle of Balconies. The problem is it's hard to find all these special releases outside of Texas. Be quite honest, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, of course. I was able to get a bunch of cool bottles from them when I visited Texas. Now, I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen this year or not. I don't know what kind of stuff they have in the pipeline. They keep it pretty close to the vest. They send out emails every now and then. They post stuff on social media sometimes, but it's really hard to track down until it's go time, pretty much. Any cool Balcones bottles, I'm about it. And of course, there's always store picks to be on the lookout for. There's a lot of great store pick bottles and many that I still have yet to experience and explore. What I'm looking for this year are any good Maker's Mark store picks. I love Maker's Mark and some of their store picks are just fantastic. So if you find a good store where you know you've tried a couple of their store picks and they're good, it's a pretty good bet then moving forward you can trust whatever they're gonna pick. Surprisingly, Total Wine seems to be pretty decent with their store picks for the most part. I've, you know, I've heard people rag on them for a store pick here and there, but honestly, the ones that I've had from them are good. So for a big corporate store, it's not bad. Starlight, they have all kinds of fun finishes and flavors that they're doing with their bottles. It's always interesting to see what they're gonna do. I've seen everything from the Amberana finish to apple brandy, grape brandy, uh, different wines, and you name it, they got it. So check that out. Yellowstone. I don't really, I don't know if I've talked much about Yellowstone on the channel before, but their store picks are very tasty. They've definitely got a fruit-heavy profile, but it's it's very good. I've enjoyed each store pick that I've tried, and I've had at least four or five. They come in 109, 115. There's three proof points that they come in: 115, 109 for sure, maybe 104. I forget. I forget. But there's three proof points. 109 seems to be the sweet spot. 115's not bad, but 109 seems to unlock the flavor the best. Check those out. If you haven't tried one, it's worth picking up a bottle. For really rare bottles, I mean, we're talking unicorns here. Still, there's not a whole lot that I would really pursue and go crazy for. George T. Stagg, that is my all-time unicorn right now. But still, I'm not willing to pay hundreds of dollars for it. Maybe $200? I know my wife sees these videos because she edits them, but maybe 200. Retail is 100. I've seen it, you know, seven, 800, 1,000 easily for George T. Stagg. But from what I've heard, that one truly is worth it. Regular old Stagg, formerly Stagg Jr., I would buy those anytime. $100 or less, that's an instant buy. Up to 125 bucks. I might think about it for a couple more seconds, but I'd probably still buy it because the bottles of those that I've had have been amazing. $50 retail. It's amazing. I'd also be interested in Four Roses Small Batch Limited Edition, cast strength. That retails for about $150. The Parker's Heritage, uh, you just never know what kind of whiskey they're going to roll out or the price point for it. So it's hard to say. Parker's Heritage, again, I've never tried it, but I've only heard good things about it. Four Roses gets released in September. Parker's Heritage gets released in October. Now, some things that I'm not going after this year based on my personal experience. Midwinter Night's Dram. I was able to get a bottle for 120 bucks this year plus tax. And it was good. It was good and it was fun to try. I'd only heard great things about it, but from what I was but from other people in the community that have enjoyed it in the past, they said this year was a little bit of a down year. And the bad news is next year the price is going up, 140, 150 bucks for it. 
Based on what I taste this year, I cannot justify that price at all. Similar with Remus Repeal. Only good things. Everybody talked and talked it up, which, you know, when that happens, maybe it's already setting the bar too high in your mind, but that one, I got it for about 90 bucks. I saw it mid 80s on up. It drank more like a 50 to 60 bottle, 50 to 60 dollar bottle. And it, again, price is only going to go up on that guy. I just, at that price point, it's not something that I love or have attachment to, so I'm not going to pursue it. Simple as that. There are still so many bottles out there yet to try and explore, lots of new brands. I'd like to continue my, my search this year with digging into the, some of the smaller under the radar bourbons. This year proved to be amazing with that with Hewling Station from Old Dominic. I'm sure there's more like that out there. And when I find them, I'm gonna share them with you guys because I wanna get the word out about good bourbon that you can find at a great price on the shelf. That does it for me today, folks. Until next time, cheers and happy hunting. <laughs>